Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use VS Code under Windows using the Windows subsystem for Linux. It'll be a brief tour linking to a few guides and showing you how to get started. So to begin with, I'm using uh, Visual, Sub, uh, Visual Studio's code under Windows, so I'm going to download that, and I'll probably download the user install 64-bit version. I've already done that and installed it. And then the next thing you'll want to do is install Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, Microsoft has a nice guide for that. I'll put the link in the uh, description down below. And you can follow that. They've actually simplified it recently, and now it's just one single command in PowerShell. Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL, space, minus, minus, install. You do this from a uh, PowerShell and type it in. I've done it already and installed it. Um, it'll install Windows Subsystem for Linux as two as a default. You can also configure it to one if you wanted to. But anyway, you get that installed. And then once you've done that, it'll install Ubuntu for you as a default uh, package, a default um, kind of, yeah, bundle. And that'll let you get uh, Opera up and on running. And once you've got that installed, you get a nice uh, command prompt there. Then the final thing is you can follow the guide that walks you through how to use Windows sus Subsystem for Linux with VS Code. And that's going to be what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So to begin with, I'm going to create a folder that I want to work inside of. I'm going to do this under Windows. So I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm going to name this one, um, I don't know, uh, Compute uh, 130. If you're taking a course like 130, and this will be a folder you want to work inside of. So this is under uh, My Documents. I've got a web, just a standard file, a standard file manager here, and I'm going to put it somewhere I want it to. Now let's go and open this in VS Code and put some code there. So I'm going to run VS Code. Uh, just the start menu, it popped up off screen, so I'll bring it onto screen here. Okay, so now this is VS Code. It's in Windows, and it's sort of just a normal Windows thing. It's not yet working with Windows Subsystem for Linux. The first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to install an extension pack for that. So I'm going to go on the left-hand side, and I'm going to click Extensions, setting here, and I'm going to type in um, Windows Subsystem for Linux. I think I can just type in WSL. And I can say this remote WSL. I've already got it installed, which means it's probably the right one. And this will allow me to connect to the Windows subsystem for Linux kind of running inside of Windows. So that's exactly what we need. So now that I've got that, let's open the folder that I want. Now to do this, I'm going to tell it to kind of go into Windows subsystem for Linux mode. I need to connect to this kind of remote connection. Down in the bottom hand, left hand corner, this green button, it says open a remote window. And that's what I want. So I'm going to click Open a Remote Window, and then open a folder in Windows Subsystem for Linux. So let's do that. I'll take a moment, and it'll pop up here. And you'll note here that it's sort of already browsed to this WSL. This is what's being shared or mapped off of my drive um, because I've got WSL installed. And I could open anything up in here that'll be under the right folder for WSL, but then getting the content off of there is a bit trickier. I've got this folder I just created under my, my documents. So let's go to that. And where to go? Under C, here we go. CMPD 130. I'm going to say open folder. And now you'll note that my window has changed. It's got a blue bottom. And it says here, WSL Ubuntu. So running in Ubuntu WSL. I'm in WSL 1. That's fine. So that's the big step that I need to do. If it doesn't say that at the bottom, always check. If you're trying to do WSL, check at the bottom, see if it mentions that. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to organize my tasks. So I'm going to right click in here, new folder, and let's call this lab one. Imagine we've got a lab we're going to do. I opened it up. There's no file here. So I'm going to right click the folder, say new file, and let's say main.cpp. So we got my main program. Let's write in our usual hash include include io stream using name name spaces stay uh, and then uh, int main and see out hello world of course and again end line on that I need it. And return zero. Now the return zero reminder just sends a message back to the operating system saying my program finished. Okay, so now I can go through from here and I can work on install and building things. Um, what you might need to do, and I'm going to run, I'm going to run Ubuntu. So I'm just running the Ubuntu command, which brings me up an Ubuntu prompt. 
You might need to install the compiler. You can check if you've got a compiler installed. I'm running GC, I want to run G++. So I'm going to run G++ and it tells me here, okay, it tried to run it, didn't find anything. I'm going to make this bigger, there we go. If instead, it, if it didn't find the program, it gave me an error like command not found, I want to type in, I want to install it. So I'm going to type in sudo apt get install G++. I've already done this, type in my password and it's done it for me already. Um, you might need to do this in order to make this work. There may be a few other commands you have to install as well, but you'll find that out as you go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to build this. So I can go up to terminal and I can say configure default build task. And I can pick one of these. I happen to have a number of different C++ compilers installed and I want to pick GCC here. So I want to build active file under GCC. There'll be a number of different GCCs. It won't probably matter which one. And it goes through and it configures it all. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to switch up my errors and I like to tell it to kind of um, treat some things as errors in my code. So I'm going to, uh, inside of this list of args, I'm going to add in, I'm going to do it here at the top, why not? I'm going to ask and a minus W-A-L-L -L, with a capital W, the rest lowercase. This will treat this will show me all warnings, and I'm going to set them to be errors as well. W E R uh, E R O R. So this will set all errors to be displayed, uh, or pardon me, all warnings to be displayed, and treat those warnings as errors. So basically, stop building. So I'll do that. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back to main. I'm going to go up to terminal, and I'm going to say uh, run build task. So this is now try and build my program. And we can see here that it's executed the G++ compiler. And it worked. Now, I want to prove it really works, so I'm going to go and add a syntax error in my program. I'm going to get rid of a semicolon. I'm going to redo that build. Uh, so, uh, run build task. And we can see that it now fails. I can hold down control, and I can click on this line, and it will show me, it'll tell me, oh, hey, do you want to take it to this location? I'm going to hit enter. No, uh, no matches found. I'm not sure why it's not working on that. I'll have to look into that later. Oh, um, nope, I'm not sure why actually. I say maybe if there's a space in my path, but there are no spaces in the path that I've got here. But that's fine. Um, if I click on the other one, does that work? Hmm, I'm not sure why it's not picking it up for me, but that's fine. So it would take, normally it would take me up here to the right place. I'll add my semicolon back in. Control Shift B is the hotkey. And so I'll rebuild it and it's in here. Okay, so that's how I can build it. And the last thing I want to show is how to run it. So if I go up to terminal and start debugging, uh, well, in fact, there's two ways to run. So now that I've built it here on the left main, I can click on terminal, new terminal, and we can see that I'm in the folder, the root folder. I wanted to get into my lab, so I'm going to ls to show you. This is lab one, my folder. I'm going to cd space lab. I could type the whole thing or type a little bit, hit tab, and it auto completes. I'm in there now. We can see these are the files. I can type dot slash main is the program I want to run, and there it is. I can run it in the console, or the terminal. This is a good way, um, but I want to do it through the debugger as well. So I'm going to go back into my main here. I'm going to go to run, start debugging. I can pick what environment I want to run through. I'm going to select the GDB, LDB, LLDB, and then build the active file. That's good. Similar as before. And this is going to come up with my configuration. Now, initially, it doesn't actually run my program. It just builds me all these configuration files, this launch file. I'll show you where it is. If I go on the left, I go to Explorer view. In this VS code, I've now got tasks, which is where I configured my build, and launch, which is what it's doing now. So I'm going to close both of those. We've now got it configured. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to say run. So back to my code, F5, and run. It goes through, it builds it and then it run it. Here it is. Well, let's put a breakpoint in and prove what's going on here. I'm going to set a breakpoint by clicking on the left here. And then I'm going to go to run, start debugging. And now I hit the breakpoint. We can see on the left here that I'm in the debug mode and I can start to run through the debugger. I can see what's happening. I can step over this line of code. I see the output and carry on. A note that it's way much better to use um, Visual Studio's code under Windows inside of WSL rather than using something like MinGW because of this integrated debugger works much more seamlessly. Okay, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to show here. Thank you very much for watching. Happy coding!